Welcome to High Impact Living, the motivational speaking of Rick McDaniel, the noted author, international communicator, and senior pastor at Richmond Community Church in Richmond, Virginia. And we're focusing on passages of Scripture that are just really inspiring passages of Scripture. And here's another great one today, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. We often suffer, but we are never crushed. Even when we don't know what to do, we never give up. In times of trouble, God is with us. And when we are knocked down, we get up again. Last week when I kicked off this series, we had had the storms come through and knock out the power. And so it was kind of uh, serendipitous how God just placed that one in my lap. That I was talking about the power of God and the strength that God gives us right when the power just went out. This week, it's uh, a little different. This one's planned. I knew that I would be speaking on this theme, and so I purposely chose this day to do it because today is my 34th wedding anniversary, or our 34th wedding anniversary. Now, when I say that, I think maybe there's a couple of possible thoughts that go through people's minds. One is, wow, that's great, Pastor Rick. You and Michelle have been married for 34 years. That's a long time. Others of you are thinking something like this. Wow, I didn't realize how old and decrepit you are, Pastor Rick. My goodness, you are more ancient than I even realized. So hopefully it's more the former than the latter that you're focused on today. But I wanted to talk about persistence and perseverance on the day that my wife and I mark 34 years of marriage. Because I can say marital bliss, and I can say that honestly in a larger macro sense, but I can certainly tell you this. If you're going to stay married for 34 years, you are going to have to persevere. You are going to have to make it through some tough and difficult and challenging times. There's just no way around it. Now, last night I did a wedding for a young man who literally grew up in this church. And so all of these things are sort of swirling about in my mind. Weddings and anniversaries and good times and challenging times. I think that there are times in any marriage when it's pretty smooth sailing, when it's really kind of easy. And you could almost think, I don't know why anyone ever gets divorced. This is a breeze. Then you can be hit with some storms that are going to tempt you to say, I don't want to be married anymore. I want a divorce. And there are times and seasons in between. But the reality is that anything, and I said this to the couple I married last night, and I'll say it to you, anything worth having is going to take a lot of hard work and persistence on your part. I don't know anything that's of value that doesn't require that kind of mentality that says, I'm not going to give up no matter what. I think about the things that mean so much to me, like this church that I was the founder and started over 22 years ago, and think about all the times it would have been so easy to quit or to give up And yet, what God has done and the tens of thousands of lives, maybe hundreds of thousands, that he has touched through this ministry that never would have happened. I think about the college degrees that I have and the books that I've written and how hard and how much it took to just persevere through those kinds of challenging times. No one just hands you a degree and you can't get a book published without a lot of persistence and hard work. There's just no other way around it. And there will always be opportunities for us to say, I'm just going to bail on this. It's just too difficult. It's just too hard. And yet, persevering and refusing to give up can result in fantastic things. One of the people came up to me after the wedding 
and said, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'm, I'm from Indiana, and I'm um, related to such and such, and I just wanted to tell you I read your book or one of your books, and it was really great, it really helped me. And when he walked away, I just thought, you know, you just never know what God can do when you just persist and how he can use your life to touch other people's lives. And whatever it is, whether it's a marriage or parenting or a job or whatever it is that God may has called you to do or put in your life to do, you've got to come to a place where you say, I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to give up, not going to quit. Now, I just want to show you a few things in this scripture, because each one of these scriptures are filled with words that are translated in English and maybe need a little more help for us to understand them better. So let's look at the word suffer. We often suffer. So the word suffering means different things to different people, but a lot of us, I think, when we think of suffering, we think of like, you know, having a disease or, or, or just a, or a loss, grief, things like that. So I just want to show you what this word means. The word actually means to, to be pressured, to be burdened, to, to experience pressure. So it's, it's more than just suffering and maybe the way we understand it, but the larger sense. And I would just simply say, how many of you know what it's like to feel the pressure? Sure, we all do. That's life. Life is filled with pressure. And then it says, we are often experiencing pressure, but we're never crushed. And the word there means to be in a confined space, you know, to be in a place, you know, again, it's the pressure idea, you know, to be in such a pressure-filled situation. Even when we don't know what to do. Even when we don't know what to do. And what's interesting about the word here for not knowing what to do, which is many words in English, but one word in the original Greek that the New Testament is written in, it means at its basic level to be despondent, but it particularly means to be despondent over financial pressures. To be despondent, to feel the pressure. And even when you're at the end of your rope, even when you're at a place where you just don't know what to do, we never give up. In verse 9 it says, in times of trouble, and yeah, it means pretty much that, in all kinds of various experiences, and this next phrase is the key to this whole message and to the scripture today so it's worth circling or underlining or highlighting if you're using a tablet or your smartphone and here it is god is with us god is with us god is with us and when we're knocked down and the word here for knocked down means to and it's a wrestling, it could be a wrestling term. It means to be thrown down in a wrestling match. It means to be struck down by a sword. Even when we are struck down, even when we are tossed down, even when we are knocked down, even when any of those things happen, we get up again. Because God is with us. God is with us. God says, you can persevere. And when we were backstage here a moment ago, we always pray before the services, and I was just saying to the team, you know, you just never know what people are going through. You just never know who may walk through the doors of this Glen Allen campus. You just never know who might be on the internet campus in one of those six services this week. You never know when someone may come across this message on the broadcast or on the internet. And what are they going through? What is it that you, you may be in the middle of that financial pressure. You may say, I can't believe you just said financial pressure, Pastor Ray, because that's it. I feel like there's a vice and I just feel like the pressure is just mounting and mounting and mounting. And, and I, I understand that. I mean, as a church, I understand that. We're going into the summer season. We don't have the normal reserves that we normally should have. I feel that pressure. And it is. It is a it is a, an unpleasant, and that's the nicest word you can say, an awful sense of just being squeezed and wondering, how is it going to happen? Maybe some of you are literally at a place where you're ready to quit on your marriage. 34 years for you, Pastor Rick? Yeah, that's great, but not for me. It's, uh, 
It's not going to happen. I'm not, I'm just, I'm ready to bail on this husband of mine. I'm ready to, to move on to a new wife because I just can't, I just can't stay in this any longer. Maybe some of you are re ready to, to give up on your dream. You've just been trying and trying and working and working. It's just nothing's happening. It's not moving forward. And if you think that it is by accident or some stroke of luck that you have stumbled upon this service or this message, I want to tell you, it is God's providential care over your life. And what God is saying to you is, I am with you. God is with us. And you can, in fact, overcome. You can make it. You don't have to quit. And you should never, ever, ever give up. Now you say, well, that's great, Pastor Rick. Those are some encouraging words. But exactly how am I supposed to do that? So let me walk you through it today. It begins with determine your commitment. You have to determine what you're committed to. If you're not committed, it will always be easy to quit. So you have to say, am I committed? Now, if we go back to the marriage example, when, when I marry a couple, I, I say to them, the commitment that you have made, I will be a lifelong spouse. I will be loyal and true to you as long as we both shall live in sickness and in health, richer or poorer, not with any outs. There's no outs here. It's a covenant commitment that's being made. And if you make a commitment, then you have one greater chance than you did before of not quitting. But if you're not going to commit, there'll always be the temptation to say, I'm just going to bail, I'm just going to bail, I'm just going to bail. Now, that comes back to the concept of commitment. Where's commitment today? It's certainly not where it once was, and that sounds like an old-timer phrase, and I hate to talk like that, but in this particular case, it's just the truth. It is just the truth. The facts bear it out. Membership commitments in whatever you're talking about, including churches, but also clubs and organizations of every type, are down. People simply don't want to commit like maybe they once did. And I would say to you that the lack of commitment is, is a way of taking one step toward quitting, toward giving up, toward giving yourself an option. This is why even in marriage you think about separate bank accounts and prenuptial agreements. These are all, all nothing more than ways to say, if this doesn't work out, I've got other options, rather than I'm in it to win it. I'm in it for the long haul. There are no other options because I'm fully committed. What are the non-negotiables in your life? Uh, one pastor I know said this one time, if all the people who once followed Jesus but have now quit on Jesus, if they were all to come back, Come back to church. Be a part of the family of God again. There aren't enough seats and enough pews in enough church buildings to hold them all. Now that's a, 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 a grandiose statement to make, and it may not be provable, but it's worth considering. How many people have quit? I wonder how many of you, not me because I know way too many, but I wonder how many of you know people who walked, once walked with Jesus and then quit, gave up, and what kind of damage has that done to their lives what are the non-negotiables what are the things you say i have decided to follow jesus no turning back i'm go i have decided to be married and i will stay married i have decided what are the commitments that you've made i am going to finish what i started whatever that might be commitment to be Committed is to say, I will persevere. To work on something you care about, and you care about it so much that you stay loyal to it. You say, I am going to stay loyal to this. I am going to stay committed to it. Determination and direction. This is the direction you're going. I'm determined to follow it. Passion. This is what I want to do. This is what I believe in. Perseverance. Making sure that you follow through. 
There's a guy named Steven Pressfeld, and he wrote a book, kind of a funny title, The War of Art. Not the art of war, the war of art, in which he talks about the creative process. But it's really larger than just creativity. And he talks about what he calls the resistance. Ten activities that if you endeavor to do them, you will meet with resistance. Here they are. See if any of these ring a bell in your own life. See if any of these resonate with you. The pursuit of any calling in writing, painting, music, film, dance, or any creative art. Number two, the launching of any entrepreneurial venture, whether it's for profit or otherwise. Any diet or health regimen. Any program of spiritual advancement. Number six, number five, any course or program designed to overcome an unhealthy habit or addiction. Are you following with me? Are you tracking? When you attempt to do these things, you will find resistance. Education of any and every kind. Any act of moral or ethical courage including the decision to change for the better some unworthy pattern of thought or conduct in your life. The undertaking of any enterprise or endeavor whose aim is to help other people. Any act that involves the heart, decision to get married, to have a child, to weather a rocky patch in a relationship. And finally, the taking of any principled stand in the face of adversity. Any of those ten activities, which I would hope that all of us have at least endeavored to do some of, will be met with resistance. And will require commitment. Commitment. A commitment to see it through. The benefit of all of these, and these are all marvelous activities, you could take that list, frankly, and use that as a list to say, these are all things I need to prioritize in my life and one by one begin to undertake because they all have marvelous impact. But all of them will require commitment because they involve resistance which leads to this then overcome the adversity you have to get past the resistance but i'll use a larger term like adversity because adversity comes in many shapes and sizes you need to be able to move through to push through the tough hard situations that life brings and will bring to any and every person I've said it before, but it's worth saying again. Life is, number one, hard. Number two, unfair. And number three, a test. Write it down. Life is hard. Life is unfair. Life is a test. Life is hard. It's not easy. Life is unfair. It's not always fair. And life is a test. It is a test. And it is a pass-fail. And people who give up and people who quit are people who do not pass the life test ultimately. God gives us certain responsibilities we are to be accountable for. God places within our lives certain opportunities we are responsible for fulfilling. And giving up and quitting is a guaranteed way to make sure that never happens. Which is why the Bible smack dab in the middle tells us God is with us. Even when you're under pressure, you'll never be crushed. Even when you don't know what to do, you never give up. Even when you're in times of trouble, even when you get knocked down, you get back up again because God is with us. Because we are not in this challenge alone. Failure is simply a part of the process 
that God uses, yes, uses, uses in all of our lives to build resilience, to build toughness, to create in us stickability or grit, whatever you want to call it. God uses these things. Nobody wins all the time. Everybody experiences loss and failure and defeat. Everyone. The people who are called champions do not necessarily mean undefeated, but mean through many challenges, disappointments, and defeats, ultimately overcame. Ultimately got to the point of achievement. That's what perseverance is all about. There are always going to be obstacles in the way of any, any effort that has any kind of value like the 10 that I read a moment ago. Anytime you're trying to lose weight and get healthy, there's going to be obstacles. Anytime you try to start something entrepreneurially and start something from scratch, there are going to be obstacles. Anytime you try to break a bad habit in your life, there are going to be obstacles. There will be so many exit ramps on which you can get off and decide, I don't want to do this anymore. This is too hard. That will always, always be there. Always. And you simply have to say, nope, 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 nope. I'm, I'm going to persevere. I am going to persist. You Simply evaluate and find out what went wrong. You refine your strategy and you try again. And that, by the way, friends, is what is called the formula for success. You fail. You take the failure as feedback. You figure out what you need to do differently. You refine it. You, 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 you tweak it. You re-engineer it. And you try again, or as the Bible says, when you get knocked down, you get back up again. You get back up again. You don't stay down. We must respond positively, creatively, and energetically to negative experiences and negative situations. God is not picking on you. The world is not against you. When are things going to go my way? It's just a matter of understanding that life is hard, life is unfair, and life is a test. And the moment you can get that here and then travel down 12 inches to here and live your life with that understanding, then you won't have a kind of attitude that says, why, why am I being picked on? Everybody everyone. You say, well, some people seem to get the breaks, Pastor Rick. Here's the thing, and I, I read a lot of these stories. I, I just got done reading two different books about two quote-unquote success stories in America, and in both of those books, there is great stories of success. It is true, but there are an amazing number of stories of obstacles, <laughs> failures, defeats. I mean, it is, I read the story of Nike, for instance, from the founder, Phil Knight. I mean, it's amazing some of the bad, bad stuff that happened on the way to becoming such a successful company. I mean, just stuff I never even knew about. Stuff that is totally unfair. I mean, really unfair. Like a lawsuit. I mean, a massive lawsuit. Completely unfair. I think in most people's opinions, just looking at the facts. You just never know what people go through. What you have to remember is, God is with me. God will help me. God will give me the strength to make it through. That's what somebody who has perseverance, who has grit, who has a I'm not going to give up, I'm not going to get give in kind of mentality. Let me share a story with you. This is, it's a crazy story. It's a true story, though. It comes out of a book called The Maverick War. It's about a guy who was uh, named Art Chen. He was a fighter pilot for China when the Chinese uh, were fighting with the, the Japanese in the 30s. And so here's the story. He took on three Japanese fighter planes, and uh, he shot down one, but then he ran out of ammunition, so he rammed rammed his plane into the second Japanese plane to knock that down. 
and then that, of course, caused him to crash. So he was able to crash safely. And then this is what he did. He went to his plane, and he was able to salvage one of the machine guns. He took that machine gun and walked with the machine gun eight miles back to the nearest airfield, upon which he found the most senior officer and said, sir, can I have another airplane for my machine gun? Now that is a person of perseverance. Yeah, there's still one plane up there, so if you could just give me another airplane for my machine gun, I'll just put it on and I'll just get back up there and finish the job that I started. That's what perseverance looks like. Perseverance looks like refuse to quit. Refuse to quit. When you get knocked down, you get back up again. When you get tossed down, you get back up again. You don't stay down, you get. And here's what I, here's what I believe as a Christian leader for many years. Too many, too many people quit, and here's what they quit. They quit what they start too early and too often. Too many people quit what they start too early and too often. I've just witnessed it too many times. People are psyched up, ready to go. Again, go back to some of these 10 activities. I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to make the change. I'm, I mean, it's going to be, this is going to be different. I, any pursuit of spiritual advancement was one of those. You know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to start reading my Bible and praying. I'm going to be in church every week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to do it. And then they start off with, with excitement and passion. And then what happens? They sleep in instead of getting up earlier to spend some time with God. The weekend comes and, and, and it just excuse after excuse after whatever you want to call it. And before you know it, and I'm just picking on one particular subject near and dear to my heart, but we could come up with many. Quit too often, quit too early. Quit too often, quit too early. How do you stay consistent over time? How do you say, I'm going to be consistent, and I'm going to stay consistent? And I say the word is effort. I believe it's the, it's a, it's the belief that I'm going to put forth the effort, and I am going to refuse to quit too early or too often. I am going to put forth the effort. And some of you may say, well, Pastor Rick, I just don't know. I've just quit so many times and so many things, I just think I'm a quitter. And I would say, I don't believe that. I believe anyone can change anytime they decide they want to change. Anytime you decide that's not for me any longer and I'm going to go in a different direction, you can go in a different rec direction. I, I put in your inf info guide not to be looked at right now, but to be looked at later. The Grit Scale, this is from the book Grit, which I would highly recommend by Angela Duckworth. This particular scale, and I didn't even know this, but was designed for West Point freshmen who come in and do what's called beast barracks. Well, my son Matt was a West Point freshman and went through beast barracks. And before they go through beast barracks, they ask him these 10 questions. And they use these 10 questions to determine whether they will make it through what they call beast or beast barracks. Will they be able to do it? And I think it's worth asking yourself. Sit down sometime today and just walk yourself through these 10 questions. Because here's what you'll find in these 10 questions. One of them has to do with passion for something and the other has to do with perseverance one has to do with the, the the want to the other has to do with the consistent effort that it takes to see it become a reality effort is needed to build skill and effort is needed to become productive at whatever it is you're talking about whatever it might be spiritual career personal relational all those principles apply, those singular principles apply to all of those situations. Some of you have heard or read about the 10,000-hour rule. Anders Ericsson came up with it. Malcolm Gladwell made it famous. The idea that if you want to really become an expert at something, you have to, you have to spend 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours. And we look at people who, and he gives, you know, Gladwell gives examples of people who just have incredible... Uh, proficiency and, and really have a huge impact. 
And he goes across disciplines. I mean, he talks about the Beatles, for instance. I mean, he shows a lot of different people. But here's the thing. How many folks are willing to put in the 10,000 hours? Who knows what it is that God might be able to do with you if you are willing to put forth the effort and persevere? I just wonder how much unrealized potential exists in our world today, and let's just talk about in the church today. Because great ideas, talented people, no denying those two, it's just a matter of will we refuse to quit? Will we stick with it until the end? History, of course, is replete, whether it's Churchill or Lincoln or Beethoven or Einstein, and the list goes on and on and on, of people who simply persevered, who simply refused to quit. And all of those names, by the way, that I just mentioned are names that everyone knows. Why? Because of what they were able to accomplish, because of what they were able to do, because of some of their actions really were transformed. Lincoln and Churchill saved countries. I mean, just amazing accomplishments. And what was it about them? Their, their perseverance, their grit, their stickability, their persistence. Their refusal to give up. What do we have going for us as Christians? The Bible tells us we're not to give up. The Bible tells us we're, not, we're to get back up again. But the key is God is with us. We're not doing this alone. You're not in this alone. You say, Pastor, I just don't know if I can keep going. Here's what I would say. God wants to help you. God doesn't want you to give up. God doesn't want you to quit. God wants you to get back up again, and he's there ready to help any person who would reach out to him and ask for his help and assistance. Pastor Rick will return in just a moment with some closing words of encouragement. Before he does, I wanted to remind you about our webpage, www.highimpactliving.com. It's your resource for a high-impact life. Let's pray together. Will you bow your heads with me? I just wonder for a moment, as your eyes are just closing, you're just focusing on your own life, I just wonder, you know, what, what, what's going through your mind right now? Is it something that you've been thinking about quitting? Giving up on? If it is, I can tell you this. God's speaking to you right now. cares about your life so much that he's allowed you to hear this so that you might be reminded that uh, he's there to help you and he's with you and all you have to do is just call out to him and ask for his help and recommit yourself and just refuse to give up Lord I just pray for each person listening to my voice right now I have no idea what they might be going through, but I have a sense that many are, in one way or another, tempted today to give up, tempted to quit, even though you tell us we don't give up, even though you tell us we get back up when we get knocked down, even though you tell us that you're there with us and that you're there to help us. And so I just pray that you will reach out to any person who reaches out to you today and says, I need your help, God, because I'm ready to quit. I've been knocked down and it's just, it's painful, it hurts, and I just think I'm gonna stay down. And that you would help them to get back up again. You would help them to try again. You would help them to give it another shot. You would help them to recommit. And I know, God, you'd answer that prayer for any person would ask it of you today and I thank you for that in Jesus name